Welcome to the jungle in your backyard. It may seem overwhelming, but with a keen eye and a bit of understanding, you'll soon see that your overgrown garden is full of potential. First, let's talk about some common issues you might encounter. Weeds, for instance, they're not just unsightly, they're also notorious for stealing nutrients from your plants. Dead plants can also pose a problem, as they can harbor diseases and pests. Speaking of pests, slugs, snails, aphids and the like are all too common in overgrown gardens wreaking havoc on your plants. But don't be disheartened, all these problems can be fixed. The key is understanding your garden's condition. Take a good look around, notice the areas where weeds are most rampant, where dead plants are clustered, and where pests seem to have taken up residence. These observations will guide your revival plan. Remember, every garden is unique. It has its own micro-ecosystem, its own strengths, and its own challenges. So, take some time to get to know your garden. Feel the soil, observe the insects, and watch how the sun moves across the space. This will give you invaluable insights into what your garden needs to thrive. A garden's condition can tell a lot about its needs. Now that we've assessed the state of your garden, let's find out how to plan your revival. A well-executed plan paves the way for a successful garden revival. You see, the secret to transforming an overgrown jungle into a well-kept Eden lies in careful planning. And here's where we start. First, take a good look at your garden. Your goal is to identify the areas that need the most attention. It may be a corner overrun by weeds or a flower bed choked by dead plants. Take some notes, sketch a rough layout of your garden, and mark these areas. This will serve as your roadmap during the revival process. Next up, it's time to gather your garden warriors, the tools. Start with the basics, a sturdy pair of gloves to protect your hands, a sharp pair of secateurs for pruning and cutting, a robust garden fork for loosening soil and uprooting weeds, and a sturdy wheelbarrow for moving debris. But hey, don't forget about the materials. You're going to need some organic compost for nourishing your soil, mulch to suppress weeds and retain moisture, and a selection of seeds or plants to bring life back to your garden. Now let's talk about your garden layout. Remember that sketch you made? It's time to get creative. Imagine how you want your revived garden to look. Do you see a lush lawn surrounded by vibrant flower beds, or perhaps a tranquil spot with a bench under a shady tree? Consider the space you have and plan accordingly. If your garden is small, think vertical. Trellises, climbing plants and hanging baskets can create a sense of height and depth. For larger gardens consider creating zones. A veggie patch here, a rose garden there, maybe a water feature in the middle. Don't be afraid to experiment with your design, after all this is your garden, your sanctuary. But remember, a garden is a living, breathing entity. It needs time to grow and flourish. So be patient, be persistent, and above all, be prepared to adapt your plan as needed. With a clear plan in mind, it's time to clear the overgrowth. Because in the battle of the garden revival, your plan is your strategy, and your tools are your allies. So, gear up, and let's get to work. Clearing the overgrowth is like setting a blank canvas for your garden masterpiece. It's the moment when you take control, swapping chaos for order, and creating a fresh start for your verdant paradise. Now, you might be wondering, where do I start? Well, the first step is to identify the types of overgrowth you're dealing with. Weeds, unruly bushes, or perhaps invasive vines. Each requires a slightly different approach. Weeds, those unwelcome guests, can be uprooted manually. But remember, it's vital to get the roots. Leaving them behind is like leaving an open invitation for a reunion party. For larger areas, you might want to consider a weed puller tool. It's a back-saving invention that makes the task less of a chore. Next we have the bushes that have taken a little too much liberty. Pruning is the key here. Start by identifying dead or diseased branches. These are the first to go. Then, shape the bush, cutting back to a bud or a branching point. Remember, Pruning is not just about control. It's also about encouraging healthier growth. Perhaps you're facing a vine invasion. It's important to know that some vines like ivy can damage structures and choke other plants. The best approach is to cut them back drastically, then dig out the roots. Be persistent, as these are tenacious plants and may require several rounds of removal. Clearing the overgrowth is not just about removal. It's also about preparation for what's to come. Therefore, once you've cleared the area, Consider covering the soil with a layer of mulch. This will not only enrich the soil, but also help prevent the return of those pesky weeds. Now that we've cleared the canvas, it's time to focus on the soil and plant health. After all, a beautiful garden is not just about what's above the ground, but also what's beneath it. So let's dive in and breathe new life into that garden of yours. Healthy soil and plants are the foundation of a thriving garden. 
But what does this really mean? Let's take a closer look. Soil health is paramount. It's the lifeblood of your garden, the cradle in which your plants grow. It's not just about dirt. It's about a living, breathing ecosystem teeming with microorganisms, nutrients, and minerals that plants need to flourish. But how do you know if your soil is healthy? One way is by checking its structure. Healthy soil should crumble in your hand. If it's too hard or too soft, it may need some TLC. This is where soil treatment comes into play. Compost is a gardener's best friend. It enriches the soil, improves its structure, and feeds those helpful microorganisms. So don't throw away those kitchen scraps, turn them into black gold for your garden. Fertilization is another crucial aspect of soil health. It's like a multivitamin for your plants. But remember, more isn't always better. It's about balance. Too much fertilizer can harm your plants and the environment. So, read the instructions, and when in doubt, less is more. Now, let's talk about plant health. Reviving an overgrown garden often means dealing with stressed or damaged plants. It's important to prune dead or diseased branches to prevent further damage. But be gentle. Pruning is like surgery for plants, so make clean cuts and avoid tearing. Watering is also key. Plants are around 90% water after all, but again, balance is key. Too little water and your plants will dry out. Too much and they could drown or develop diseases. A good rule of thumb is to water deeply but infrequently. This encourages roots to grow deeper, making plants more resilient. Lastly, don't forget to mulch. Mulch is like a blanket for your soil. It helps retain moisture, suppresses weeds, and can even improve soil structure over time. Plus, it gives your garden a neat finished look. Remember, reviving an overgrown garden is a journey, not a race. It's about working with nature, not against it. And the reward? A flourishing garden that's not just beautiful but also healthy and resilient. Healthy soil and plants set the stage for beautiful design and landscaping. Design and landscaping bring life and personality to your garden. It's not just about planting and pruning but also about creating a space that reflects your personality and serves your needs. Imagine your garden as a canvas, and you're the artist. The first step in the design process is to visualize what you want. Do you see winding paths, leading the eye and the feet on an intriguing journey? Or perhaps you fancy a cozy seating area, a peaceful nook for reading, or a space for al fresco dining. Paths and seating areas aren't just functional, they also add structure and form to your garden. Paths can be made from a variety of materials, from gravel to brick, and can be straight or winding, wide or narrow. Seating areas too can take many forms. They can be a simple bench under a tree, a hammock strung between two sturdy branches, or a gazebo adorned with climbing roses. Once you have your paths and seating areas in place, consider adding water features. A small pond, a bubbling fountain, or even a birdbath can bring a sense of tranquility to your garden. The sound of water can be incredibly soothing and can help to mask the noise of traffic or neighbors. But remember, design doesn't have to be complicated. Sometimes, the simplest designs are the most effective. The key is to create a space that you love, a space where you can relax and unwind, a space that makes you smile every time you step into it. With your design in place, your garden's revival is just a weekend away. Reviving your garden is not just about hard work, but also about the joy of seeing your vision come to life. We've journeyed through the process beginning with understanding the condition of your garden and identifying the issues that need addressing. We've plotted the revival, deciding on the tools and materials necessary to bring life back into your space. We've delved into the nitty-gritty of clearing overgrowth and maintaining the health of your soil and plants. Finally, we've explored the exciting world of design and landscaping, where your creativity can truly shine. This transformation, from an overgrown jungle to a well-kept paradise, is not an overnight miracle. It's a journey that requires patience, diligence, and most importantly, love. But as you can see, it's a journey well worth undertaking. Start your garden's journey today. And remember, every garden is a labor of love.